Oh, what's up? Hi, sisters. What's up? Hey, guys. Walk it like I talk it. Walk it. Walk it like I talk it. What is up, y'all? I am so pumped for this video. I have not been pumped for a video in such a long time because we are going over the tea. The, we're, we're gonna it's gonna get juicy the point of this video is just to explain to you how to really overcome fear I'm going to tell you guys some stories about people who have didn't give a f about what they were doing it so these are the people that crushed it on YouTube they ignore the algorithm and now if you guys don't know the only way I can explain this is if I add a little bit of backstory so you understand it so if you don't mind grab a freaking snack we're gonna get juicy and throughout the entire vlog I'm gonna talk about youtubers and give you value and go get juice so i'm gonna get ready for juice i got a comment from Haley asking if i should do a makeup routine and i'm gonna just go with you guys so if you're a dude and you're watching this and you really just want some more like concrete stuff and like tips and tricks well i'm not that channel okay go watch i don't know like thor you know like i'm not i'm i'm entertainment i'm an art I'm an now there are people who basically blow up for no reason and we are sitting here just stunned at their growth and there's a few faces you might watch as well so, the thing with these people it questions my teaching i'm also contemplating whether my teaching is valuable to you guys because there's people out there that don't give a shit about anything i'm talking about but still crush it so, with those type of people we're gonna crack down the code An algorithm guys if you don't know basically youtube has a formula to calculate which video is going to go viral so if you see a couple videos kind of like this one. So there's some people who blankly ignore the rules of YouTube, blankly offend and make weird contradicting videos, but crush it. So we're gonna get into that today. So we're gonna start on my face. Um, I feel like I've grew this channel really, really quickly, but I've been here for like seven years. So I basically, I've seen everything. Like I've seen the days where Tyler Oakley was relevant. That's the thing. This is my goal for you guys. Like I want you guys to learn other people's success stories that that's why i do this series not to like shove it in your face but i hope it's valuable so with that in mind on this channel we talk about social media growth so if you guys ever have a question drop it below the dharma nation which is you guys will answer you and i will answer you back my community here on youtube is super supportive and we're here to help you if you want to join make sure you subscribe to this channel and comment any question you have i am here for you i literally look at every single comment the products will be listed below. I'm so excited to get smoothies today. So for the first uh, juicy topic of the day, we're going to talk about <laughs> James Charles. James Charles is honestly iconic. James Charles, he is a beauty guru with over four, almost four million subscribers and followers with literally consistently two million, three million, four million views on each video. His original videos were kind of makeup tutorials. I consider him just a beauty guru in general because now he does kind of lifestyle comedy stuff. So my biggest assumption for why James Charles grew. So the only thing I can think about James, I don't know how you did it. You are a charismatic, talented soul. So that's probably a contribution. Like you guys have to realize if you're talented and you don't write the algorithm, you might have a chance. But if you're not talented and you can't even do shit in marketing, you're probably not gonna have a chance. Say you're charismatic, you like what you're doing and you're on camera. James Charles does a good combination of both. And uh, he's been doing this for a while. So his collaborations really bring traffic. He just did a collaboration with Javia, Javia, which is an amazing, amazing, popular, relevant singer. The keyword is relevant. Like he collaborates with people that are only relevant to his audience and nothing else. I don't use concealer everywhere. I only use it with a brush, okay? This is what makes it like super glowy on camera this is the magic this is eyeshadow from this palette guys it's like literally hey we're done with the look my outfit so we're gonna go off to the juice bar ah, hey, you're in my car and we're getting some drinks so back to the topic okay the next person we're gonna go over is cody Ko. I think he really ignores the algorithm. Like, all of his content has no keywords whatsoever. But the one thing he's really good at, it's actually really fucking funny. I don't know what else to say. I think he got traction. I was looking through his content. He makes a lot of Instagram references. So obviously he picks on people that don't like Instagrammers. It kind of is like the opposite of Alexis Ren, right? Like, there's a lot of fans 
of models, but there's also a lot of people who don't like models. So Cody Co is just a good example of the relatable person that doesn't want to idolize people and makes fun of them. You know what I mean? The only reason why Cody Co is able to ignore the algorithm is because he has a really strong opinion on people and he doesn't really give a shit. And he's also really extremely funny and makes relatable content that anyone can bond to, which is like Instagram shit. Cody Co, I'm still, you know, really questioning how you grew because it's really great and you're really big and you're really funny. But uh, I think I have to say it's mostly from your, the topics you're talking about and the fact that you're actually kind of talented and you have a podcast. So if you want to if you want to hang out, let me know. <laughs> All right, the next person who ignored the algorithm, Emma freaking Chamberlain. Dude. This one was hard. I don't know how. Honestly, some of you guys, all of you guys literally asked me, what do you think about Emma Chamberlain? You sound like Emma Chamberlain. You edited a So, the first of all, I just want to say, Emma didn't like event her editing. So, Emma is a YouTube lifestyle blogger. Extremely funny. Extremely funny. Well, the thing is, the thing is, she has around 900,000 subscribers in six months. We're all sitting here thinking like, Peter McKinnon is shaking. Like, every YouTuber that I think they grew really fast. I thought wrong because Emma's shaking the entire industry. I had to dig deep. I dug so deep to find how she was able to grow in such a short amount of time and this is my result. So Emma actually started with content that was really searchable. So she started with beauty tutorials and it didn't get as much traction but she did start with a lot of you know how to's and tutorials. She started doing lifestyle comedy and the one that popped was Thing, this one so the only one that really like shook her trajectory and if you're interested in watching me do those things <laughs> now when I look at this piece of content I'm just like okay, I still didn't, didn't know why and how so this this is the assumption guys and I don't honestly know the YouTube algorithm blessed Emma soul because of how you know what? I don't even know. Okay, I think I think I got it. I think I got it. So the only assumption, the only thing, because Emma, you are literally a magician. Like we want your subscribers, we want your talent. My only assumption is her audience, her target audience, is very very narrow. I found Emma girls in my school that were like everyday teenagers. What I've learned is millennial teenage girls love it when people their age are doing things that they can't do. For example. Emma Chamberlain is herself unapologetically. A lot of what the fuck? Unapologetically. 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 Unapolog. This word. Emma is herself with no worries. Like she doesn't really care. And a lot of girls suffer from insecurity and just trying to be themselves. In high school, is extremely hard. So Emma's kind of the leader or the pioneer in this case, where she's leading a movement or generation that doesn't give a shit. <laughs> she started with just being herself and. Girls, her demographic likes that. Now, your demographic might not be into weird, relatable shit, but you have to see. So Emma tried a lot of things, and that's why she didn't really need the algorithm, because her target demographic, or her niche, it gives her a lot of leverage. Now, I'm not saying that she's excluding guys, but I know when I found Emma, it was through a group of girls, and you have to, you gotta realize, high school teenagers clump. They clump like crazy. Literally, if you're friends with one person, you're friends with Rebecca and her squad. You know what I mean? So they talk a lot. So I heard of Emma through like a group of friends. So I feel like she has a lot of fans that are also in group chats. So maybe they're sharing videos. And that's the only reason why she didn't really need the algorithm itself to like, you know, she didn't have to follow it because other her fans are supportive niche, if that makes sense. So uh, <laughs> yeah, Emma, we love you and you are freaking killing it so please give us some subscribers oh oh my gosh so that house like literally right there i don't know if you see it that one i used to so check this guy when i was really broke and i didn't have much and i didn't do youtube because i was really scared what people thought it goes back to like just being really afraid of like not fitting in high school um i i dropped out of high school but before that i was working as a tutor <laughs> and i remember like thinking like when i got a 20 dollars cash from them after tutoring i was super pumped and then I was like literally thinking in my head I'll never ever be able to you know buy a camera or afford anything because I don't come from much and tutoring was all I have because I mean my parents love me and I love them but they didn't give me like allowance like people and now I look back and I don't tutor anymore because I have my own business on YouTube and it pays so like I just realized out of this entire month I was able to hit my income goals it's just crazy like I feel like YouTube is so amazing when you don't plan for it like you really can't go into being successful on YouTube like you just can't like every youtuber knows this for sure if you reach a point where you have like a little bit of leverage or social proof but 
you never think that you're gonna hit a hundred thousand you just kind of do what it takes a lot of people focus on the outcome they don't focus on the process and it doesn't help you at all when you focus on getting a hundred subscribers or a thousand it helps you when you actually make quality quality searchable content or when you focus on you know improving your algorithm skills or in this case just being yourself and it doesn't really there's actually no rules the only thing I'm teaching you guys is like consistency and always implying new things if it doesn't work try and you can't you just can't stick to one entire like guys imagine if I stuck to tutoring kids my entire life because I made money like there's no way I was gonna start YouTube right you have to try different things you gotta like, always implement and test because once it, once something works it also can mean in a few months it will go absolutely because of the market changes so whenever I'm telling you success stories it's always keep you motivated keep trying and I don't think you should ever settle for one technique so whether you're happy with your follow and follow like system, it's gonna get old one day and you need to try new things in order to survive in the market. I really want you guys to know, the one thing I want you to take away is always keep testing and trying and I'm giving you guys opportunities to not even follow what I'm saying, to go out of your way and fuck the algorithm. Ah, looking good. So I got a pink drink, it's one of my favorites. Other than matcha. Talk it, talk it. Walk it like I talk it. Woo. Walk it like I talk it. Walk it. Walk it. I'm gonna drive it home. Thank you so much for joining me on my Starbucks adventure. Yeah, shout out to the comment winner. You won some merch. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you're the comment winner and you won the merch, email me at. And if you also bought merch, email me at and I will get your handwritten rose on the back of your sticker. Catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so, so much for watching. Like this video, comment, and subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye.